I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance I pledge All right, good morning. We have a little bit of a surprise this morning. I want to introduce Michelle Stevens with the Lubbock Area Foundation. She's here to present a special surprise to someone today. I am here today to um, award a wonderful scholarship. It's worth $20,000. And one of you guys is getting it. Do I have a Paul Gashin in the house? Congratulations, you're getting the Don and Sybil Harrington Scholarship. These kids are amazing. Are you surprised? Yay! That's the whole idea. So we are so proud of you. Um, you're an amazing student. And we just cannot wait to see what you do um, with your future. So we believe in you and um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Yes, yes. Hey guys, just so you know, this will be on KCBD 11 and Fox 34 News tonight, so check it out. How's everybody doing? Let's pray, Father God, we ask. That you prepare our hearts for today, Father. Um, that as we worship you, that you would just align us um, with you, God, in your will. And that you'd speak to our hearts today. Um, and that we'd grow closer to you. And it's in your son's name we pray.
I'm free I'm no slave to sin And I'm a saint And I'm righteousness Oh, and I'm alive I'm alive And I'm alive Oh, and I'm alive And I'm alive And I'm alive Six feet. 
into our hearts as we go throughout this day. And in this time that we have in chapel, Father, we just ask that you bless us. And it's in your son's name we pray. Grant Hendricks. I'm a trooper with the Missouri State Highway Patrol. I'm at the site of Mariah West's accident. Mariah's vehicle traveled across this median and ended in uh, striking the bridge that you can see behind me. When I got to the scene, her face was disfigured from sliding down the roadway. It's, it's funny, the, the first thing I noticed about her was her shoes. <laughs> Lying in the roadway in a, in a large pool of blood, I noticed her shoes and I thought, this is a young girl. That's the first thing I thought when I saw this. And at that point is when I noticed her cap and gown was still in her car. She was going to graduate the next day. It was just a really horrific scene all because of a senseless text message. It's just sad. Sorry, it's just sad. would text hundreds of messages every day. That was the way we kept in touch. We would definitely text more than we talked. Mariah was a multitasker extraordinaire. She could text better than anyone I know. She could be having one conversation with me completely focused. While having a text conversation with somebody else would be at school, at home, movies, bowling, driving, not even looking at her phone. It didn't matter where we were, we were constantly texting. This is my sister. She was looking at my message that I had just sent her. When she looked up, she had clipped the median on the left-hand side of the road. Her truck flipped, and as it was flipping, she was actually ejected through the driver's side door, and she landed in the ditch about 300 feet from her truck. People will tell you over and over again, it's not your fault, but knowing that you were the person that she was talking to when she was killed. Just knowing, having a highway patrol officer write in a report that a text message sent at 12.05 is the reason that she is dead is not something that will ever go away. If I could talk to her one last time, I would just say I'm sorry. This is her cell phone that she used in the accident. Four little letters. That's what killed her. People don't realize it could just take three seconds. I was going to the movies and the car just went directly into a tree and it was a direct collision. I was the passenger. I collided with the tree on my right temple and I was declared dead on the scene three times. I used to be able to drive. I used to be able to go for walks. I used to be able to 
running around town by myself. I used to have a job. I was normal. And all this, I, I cannot do anymore because they had the text. This is the text message that changed my life forever. The day before her graduation, my daughter drove to go meet a boy. I mean, she never made it. Today, she would have been 19 years old, exactly. Mariah never wanted a minute to go by that she wasn't doing something. She wanted to do everything all at one time with friends and family and just having a good time. That's what she loved. Friends would tell me from school that, you know, the best part of the day at school was Mariah coming down the hall because she'd stop to give everyone a hug. Okay, guys, in honor of Mariah. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mariah. She had met a guy Happy who played birthday. baseball, and one evening she just spontaneously got in her car and said, Hey, I'm going to come watch this game. He was texting her to tell her directions of where she needed to go. And I guess she just looked away for too long. Where, where are you at, you know? Like, that, that was it. One of her friends had no idea that she had been in an accident, so he kept texting. We ended up having to send him a text back to say, please stop, she's in critical condition in the hospital and we don't know if she'll even make it. She always worked her magic, you know, and still to this day, without her being here, she's so much still a part of our lives every day. She was our sunshine. She really was. She was. It's a simple text message. Where are you at? Three simple words. She paid the ultimate price for her actions. I've had to do this more than once. Mariah is not the only, the only victim that I've dealt with. And it never gets any easier. And it won't get any easier. What is worth losing your life over? That text message? Hey guys, okay, as most of y'all know, this is your student council for this year, and I know that video was probably a little corny, and it was a little long, but we just thought we'd raise a little awareness about not texting and driving, and a few of us have statistics, others have stories, and we're just going to do a little presentation, and then we can get to class, and Sonny's going to start us off with a story. Okay, so a couple, I guess it's been a year now. And one of my um, sister's very best friends, it was just a normal morning, 
and she was going to work, and it was really early, and um, she, my sister got a call, and they found out that, she, that Jessica um, was in a wreck that morning, and what happened is um, they're pretty, she was texting and driving, and she never even saw the semi that pulled onto the highway and was going very slow, and she ran right into the back of them and was killed instantly. And um, that really affected Sadie, and that really affected my family, because um, it was just a really hard time. And just to be, even though I didn't know Jessica personally, it affected me through my family. And so um, a lot of times it doesn't have to be you know, direct to us, but it always can affect people. So um, your actions count. And I think that, and sadly, it's a lot of times younger people. And so John has a couple statistics. <coughs> so uh, studies have shown that 77% of uh, all teen drivers say that they can safely text and drive. But on the flip side, 23% uh, of all car accidents um, involve texting and driving. So... Uh, Uh, about 15 years ago, we had a student who was a sophomore at Trinity. Uh, he was my age, and he was at a party, a Trinity party. And he was driving home from the party, and he was uh, drunk. And uh, he ended up uh, getting in a wreck, and he had died. And uh, it was really, really sad for our entire school. And uh, the point of the story is that uh, although he wasn't texting, he was still driving. And he was distracted while driving. And to say the least, that uh, it had a big impact on the entire school, and that is something that we don't want to happen with any of y'all. Uh, my dad's always told me, ever since I started driving, half of a second, and uh, you know, I'll forget my blinker, so I'm going to say half of a second, and the point of that is it only takes half of a second to lose control of your car, to kill the uh, people in the car that you just hit, to kill your passenger, your, your sibling in your car, and uh, that's something that none of us want to live with, and uh, especially your parents, so. John already shared some statistics, but I have a few more. Um, compared to drunk driving, texting and driving is six times more dangerous from several studies they've performed at several universities across the country. Um, of, on average, over 3,000 teenagers are killed every single year, and that's just teenagers from texting and driving, not even including adults. Um, studies have also shown that it takes about 4.6 seconds to read or send a text that is equivalent to driving an entire length of a football field blindfolded. So just think about that next time you're in your car. Victor has another story. You know, with the whole texting and driving thing, I've always been really skeptical and apathetic towards uh, until a couple of weeks ago, because, I mean, it, it's never going to happen to me, right? Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was driving home from a friend's house, and... Um, this lady was next to me, and she was driving really, really, really recklessly. And I was like, what's this about? So I look over, and she's texting. And I was like, ooh, that's probably not a good idea. And I was able to stop at a stoplight, and then I saw her just go straight through, obvious, and she was still texting. And then she just hit a car just really, really hard, probably 45-plus miles an hour. And, I mean, it just really hit me hard because uh, I had to give my account to the police um, there and it just really shook me up and I was I was just really taken back and it hit me straight between the eyes with my view on texting and driving and so that kind of woke me up and um, made me realize the truth about texting and driving. Molly's going to share a story now. Okay so I was involved in a texting and driving wreck with Sonny's and Laura actually uh, we were merging onto the ramp over there, and uh, some girl in a big black truck rear-ended us. And so we pulled into the gas station, and she got out of the car, and she kind of blatantly just told Sunny and I that she was texting, and she was looking at her phone. And so we had to deal with that. And so yeah, now Anna's going to share some more about texting and driving. Okay, so April is Distracted Driving Awareness Month. And so we're not just focusing this on um, texting and driving, although that's really dangerous. Um, but it's, it's like distractions, anything you're going to do that's going to distract you. So changing a CD in your car or um, like looking on your phone to switch the song, anything is going to distract you is something you need, to, you need to fix or pull over. 
that would be the better choice. So if it even, even Miss Walcott was saying, you could just put your phone in the back so that you can't get it and it'd be a lot safer and it could save lives, it could save your own life. So um, I think we have some little thumb bands and they say it can wait. So you don't have to wear it, but you can put it in your car. And so every time you get in your car, you can look at it and say, this text message can wait. It doesn't, you don't have to have it right then. They don't need to know where you are. So.